Hello everybody, uh, this is Neil from Boisse here. Some of you will hopefully remember me from the great Serdic tastings that we do every year, uh, where I traditionally show you the great wines from Burgundy, Antonin Rodet, and from the Chartres de Bompa, our 14th century monastery. Um, but today, as they say in Monty Python, now for something completely different. And today it's my pleasure to introduce you to my boss, uh, iconic figure in the wine industry, international man of mystery, and he is here to talk to us today about some mysterious wines from a mysterious destination. So, bonjour Jean-Charles. Bonjour, the Daniel Craig of wine, the James Bond of wine is you, but thank you to name me the international man of mystery. I'm delighted and honored. <laughs> Flattery will get me everywhere, Jean-Charles, I'm hoping. Anyway, so um, let's talk about these Indian wines. Uh, I bet many people watching are actually surprised that they make wines in India at all. Can you tell us, tell us just briefly where the wines are from and what make these vineyards so special? Absolutely. So the, the joint venture really started, and maybe that's a good time to pop the cork, started really thanks to a great friendship we have with our importer and producer, the Sekri family and the Fritelli estate in the heart of Maharashtra. So when you think about India, this is obviously a very large, beautiful, diverse country, full of contrast, colors, cultures, and spices, with a deep sense of fabulous agricultural land. One of them is southwest of Pune, which is that beautiful agricultural area called the Maharashtra region. And that region happens to be very fertile, very luxuriant, and a beautiful area to produce wonderful, great vegetables and produces and fruits, as well as, of course, grapes. And it's quite a new region for grapes. And our friends and partner have planted over 240 hectares of amazing estate, a little bit hillside, a little bit uh, tight spacing, very similar to what we do in the old world in Europe. And we got seduced by the potential and the flamboyancy of this great vineyard, which is really producing beautiful grapes. So we could not resist. Perfect, great. And as, as you said, the, um, the J. New wines originate from your, I think from your, your first family trip to India where you met Kapil. Could you tell me about that relationship and what your mutual vision for wines from India was? Uh, absolutely. So Kapil was already importing some of our wonderful wines from Europe. Fortin de France from the south of France, Gémoreau et Fils from Chablis, as well as our JCB wines and Boisset Winery from Burgundy and the Loge Vineyards from California. So he said, I got to invite you to the wine country. You got to see it. You love making wine and you love blending wine. Let's go and have you discover it. We went, I fell in love. Why did I fell in love? Because I did not know the potential of India was so great. And I had no idea, you know, the soil and the rootstocks as well as the clone could give such fabulous and phenomenal results. So we spend the whole weekend tasting wines in the cellar and actually blending for fun with no intention to actually make a venture. And then Kapil said, well, what about if we present those wines to a very iconic group of hotels, the Taj, and see what they think of the wines you just blended? We did that and that night they loved the wine and they said, can we have them by the glass and on our list? And we said, well, why not? We might as well call the joint venture passion because this is what it was all about. So we named it Genoon, which is in fabulous Urdu, you know, in Hindi, meaning passion. We love the name because it was very simple for all of us from the West to pronounce Genoon. And it was very charming on the palate, like the wines, and makes your lips create that beautiful movement Genoon. It's that very seductive move of the Daniel Craig and the Monty Python of the world, the mystery <laughs> of the lips movement, which really engage you to want to kiss the wine and give the wine a lot of pleasure and excitement and passion. 
Wow. Well, you, you've got me all excited to taste them now, John Charles. So um, we're going to be tasting the, the three Janoon wines uh, today. Uh, and we're going to be starting with the, the JCB 47. For people watching uh, who don't know, John Charles has a range of exceptional wines sold under the JCB label, all of which have a unique and significant number that means something to John Charles personally from his life experience. So John Charles, can you tell us first of all, why 47 and all about this sparkling Chardonnay? So we wanted to celebrate obviously India and to celebrate, we love bubbles. You know, from a French perspective, we open a bottle of bubbles all the time just to celebrate the venue of your friends to your home or obviously to celebrate a great event. In this case, in 1947, India declared its independence to England or to the Commonwealth. And it was a great moment of history where India decided to auto determine itself and build its own government and its own independence. So in this honor, the famous month of August of 1947, we said we got to create a wine that means a lot to India and that characterize it's political, spiritual independence, but as well, winemaking statement. So this wine is really all of it. It's a Chardonnay. As you can see, a method champenoise that is very pure, very delicate. The bubbles are very refined. And the idea was to make the best ever sparkling wine in India. And I'm excited to tell you, Neil, that there's a lot of great producers of sparkling in India, from Sula to Mouette Chandon to many others that are making spectacular sparkling. Here, the idea was to create the best of the best. And I'm delighted to tell you that throughout the United States and around the world now in small quantities, we really tantalize our palate with the fine bubbles of Chardonnay produced in India. And I'm thrilled about it. And I'd love your opinion because you love to obviously enjoy Chardonnay yourself. You love champagne, you love Cremant of Burgundy to Loire to Jura to South. What do you think of this one? Well, unfortunately, I don't have a bottle of that handy, John Charles. There was, there was none available in France. I have the, the red and white to taste with you. So I'll have to take your word for it, but I, but I absolutely believe you when, you when you say it's a fantastic sparkling wine. Well, the idea as well was to get a richness an intensity and an aging in the wine that really reminds you a, um, cuvee of champagne that would be a vintage cuvee, a tête de cuvee. And the idea is to have a wine with great evolution, uh, a fantastic, you know, toasting characteristic of brioche and toasting levels with that butterscotch feel of great vintage champagne with nice amber colors, as you could see through the wine and a wine that surprises you. And I've done it so many times as a blind tasting People think it's a 2004 Champagne or 2008 Champagne, and it's a Chardonnay. So it's in essence a Blanc de Blanc, as we would say. And I'm a big fan of it because I love spicy food, whether it is Thai food, Indian food, Chinese food, or even Japanese food when it's on, on the wasabi and ginger spice level. And this wine is an amazing contributor to it because of its sharpness and delicateness. Same as it is with the Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc, which is the next wine we've made within the Janoon Ranch. So Wonderful. next time, we're going to make a bottle available for you. Thank you. I look forward to it. And that's a great transition to move on to the Janoon White. Uh, as you said, uh, I can see from the, the tasting notes that this is a, a Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc blend, and that you describe it as a kind of hybrid between a southern white from Burgundy, like a Puy Fuisse, and a northern Rhone white. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, uh, about the wine style? Well, I'm an enormous fan of the whites from India. They have wonderful minerality, as we love to say, the minerals is that really sharp edge that we find in a wine that really complement beautifully food and get your mouth palate to water. And we get into that Chardonnay. You know, you allude to the Southern Burgundy. It's very true. The Pouilly Fusse, the Macon Village, even the Côte Chalonnaise Ruy could be kind of the example of the Chardonnay. And then we went, in fact, to the Loire Valley as an idea 
because the Sauvignon Blanc in this wine is a very dairy process. We've put a very high percentage of Sauvignon Blanc as a blend. So it's Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc blend. So this herbaceousness that we don't find in Chardonnay complements it. And this is a very unique blend because as Burgundian that we both are, you are an adopted, you know, holy grail of Burgundy. And I was born and raised there. What we love in Chardonnay is great. But if you could add a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc, you add a lot of freshness and herbaceousness, some beautiful herb flavor to the wine. You could do it by playing with the Loire Valley, but it's not a legal evolution of what Burgundy can be. So here in this instance, we've done it. So this bottle of wine, which I'm so excited, is actually Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc blend. So whether you like asparagus dried or with a Hollandaise sauce as a typical Frenchman, or you like more on the spice trail, you would love this wine because it has the volume, but it has as well this phenomenal floral characteristics that Sauvignon Blanc have. So there's no wine like this in the world. That's why I'm so excited about it. Nobody really blends Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc to that, you know, uh, latitude. And we've done it. And I'm absolutely energized by the wine. I'm excited about the wine. And often when I taste it with people, they say, oh, I could feel a burgundy nose. Really? And then they keep going back and say, is it Bordeaux Sauvignon Blanc? Is it Loire Valley? Is it Napa Valley? What is in this wine that really makes me salivate and want more? And that's this association that I think is very unique, very dairy, very audacious, but makes a spectacular wine. Wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm drinking actually the 2016 John Charles. I know you're drinking the 18, and I can tell you that it's aging absolutely perfectly. There's so much minerality and vibrancy, even though this wine has bottle age. So it's obviously wines that are built to last with, with great minerality, great acidity, as you say, like all the great white wines of, of, of France. So well done. This is, this is perfect. Beautiful. Thank you, and, and you know, for all of us, obviously, and, and all our friends with us today who love white Burgundy or who love Russian River Chardonnays, this is really, I think, the best compromise of all. And I, I venture to say, you know, if you're vegetarian and if you like, uh, you know, adding some spice sauce to your vegetables, this is amazing as a complement to the dish. So food and wine pairing, this is kind of the dream wine. Wonderful. All right, so moving swiftly then on to the, the final uh, wine, which is the Janoon Red. And um, a couple of things I find interesting from, from reading through the notes, uh, John Charles, about this in particular, particular wine, is that you said, you know, you compared this to a right bank Bordeaux. Uh, it, is a, it is a Cabernet Bordeaux blend with a little bit of Sangiovese uh, mixed in there. But I also noted that the, the alcohol levels are relatively low on these wines. So we think of India often as a hot country. We're thinking of maybe big, ripe wines, especially from one of the Cabernet Kings of Napa Valley like yourself. Can you talk a little bit to these wines, just a little bit you know, more, more elegant and more of an old world style? You said it all, um, Neil, very well said. That was the objective at the first place, is to harvest early. You know, there's a high level of humidity even more than heat in that area. So what you want to manage is obviously the perfect opportune ripeness time to harvest. So what we've done is by plot a independent harvest per grape variety. So they all independently fermented, long, long maceration on the Cabernet, very important to go over 60 days. So when you think about that is very small low conversion of sugar into alcohol, very mild, very gentle, very disciplined day by day, which gives that beautiful integration on the cab, which makes us allude to the right bank naturally. And then as you blend it, you age it together. So you're looking for softness, you're looking for elegance, you're looking for your palate being caressed without being attacked. You're looking for seduction rather than bondage. You want a wine that is very, very energizing and very spiritual. You're looking for the third eye. You're looking for wine that really align your chakras. And what I'm so pleased with this is very rare 
in the world of wine, Neil, that you actually blend Sangiovese with Cabernet. And we were dairy enough because one of the viticulturalists from the Fratelli group is Italian and he has a great vision of it. And I think it adds a fairness of spice that makes it very interesting. That red pepper, paprika finish that makes it very seductive again. So I believe here is this is all about the alchemy of the art of blending. You know, yes, you make the wine in the vineyards, but here as well, Vichal, our wonderful winemaker, very talented young man, is really adding that composition where yes, the vineyard speaks, but the art of winemaking speaks, and it's the wine made by the alchemy of both, not just the vineyards, not just the terroir. And I think that's why I believe this wine is stellar, why I believe this wine is magical, and it engages your third eye. And think about that because the third eye is what you don't always see, it, what you discover in a wine that you never thought about. And I really believe here the idea is to make you know, a wine that is charismatic, that is eloquent, and that is surprising. And a wine that is a discovery. Why not India? And now you have a reason to actually drink India. Wonderful. Well, once again, I'm tasting the 2016 John Charles. It's everything you say and more. Um, I love the freshness of it. Uh, it has minerality, it has its freshness, it has aromatic complexity. It's a lot of density of fruit as well, a, yep. a, an impression of sweetness uh, on the mid palate. It's an absolutely delicious, and, and, and I'm sure any Bordeaux lover would, would love to have a bottle of this. It's, it's terrific. And, and what I recommend, uh, Neil, is always to surprise your guests. And I know many of our friends are saying, okay, how am I going to serve it? How am I going to explain it? You actually don't. Put it in the decanter and serve it and say, tell me, my dear friend, where is this wine from? And they're going to be blown away. They're going to tell you right bank, left bank. They're going to tell you maybe the southern part of Napa Valley, maybe Stag's Leap, maybe Yonville, or maybe the seductive part of Santa Lina. Or they're going to tell you as simply maybe another country. What is so exciting in wine is to help people discover a new region to be in search of something you like and surprise your guests. I have a group of people on Friday, two of them are Indians. I'm gonna insert this wine in the tasting among amazing wines. And I bet you they're all gonna think it's a $300 bottle of wine from Bordeaux or Napa Valley. And when I'm gonna unveil this, they're gonna say, are you serious? And they're gonna be energized and they're gonna be excited to have discovered again, new frontier. And this is what it's all about. That's, that's wonderful, John Charles. Thank you so much. And that's brought us to the, uh, to the end of our time today. So thank you so much for this introduction to these incredibly rare, unusual and exciting wines. Uh, many thanks to Andy at Serdix for allowing us to share these wines with the, the wonderful people of the Twin Cities. And hopefully it won't be too long till I can get myself back to Minneapolis and to see your faces all again at the Serdix tasting with some more Burgundy, some more Rhone Valley, and why not, some Indian wines for you to taste as well. So thank you all for, for watching. Thank you, John Charles. It's a pleasure. And as you can see, I was wearing my beautiful jacket from India in honor of our friend Kapil and his family. And to all of you in the Twin Cities and Andy and Serdex, thanking you so much for being audacious enough to want to try new wines, to go beyond the boundaries of what we know and help us discover that the world is a very rich place, diverse and very exciting.